Hey guys, Will here with Create Studio, and in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create a laptop transition inside of Create Studio Pro. All right, so let's go ahead and play this back and see what we're working with. So we've got an animated laptop with the transition that happens that reveals a secondary uh, image across your laptop screen there, right? So we're gonna go ahead and work through this from scratch so you can see how to build it. Now, one thing to note is if you're an all access user, you do get access to this template already, and you can go here to scenes, and you'll be able to see under 3D device pack, where these uh, transition animations are located, right? So let's go ahead and delete this and let's start from scratch. All right, so our first step is to drag in some assets. All right, so let's go ahead and go to our media and let's drag in the laptop first, all right? And then we're gonna go ahead and drag in our background, um, which would be our wallpaper, right? And we're gonna go ahead and maximize this to the size of our canvas. And then let's go ahead and drag this to the length of our sequence, about 10 seconds or so. And let's rename this, right? So let's rename it BG for background. And then we're gonna go back to our assets here and drag in the image that's gonna overlay on top of that computer wallpaper, right? And we're gonna go ahead and drag this guy out to be the same. And we're just gonna go ahead and right click this and we're gonna rename this guy and he's gonna be screen image, all right? So far so good. So we've got our background, we've got our screen image. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select both of these together, right? If I just click in the black and drag my mouse around both these tracks here, I can then, um, I can either right click or what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here to the top right and click on create masked group, right? So that made a masked group for me. Now what I can do is I can double click inside this group and I can see everything inside that masked group, right? So what I'm gonna do is make sure nothing's selected. I just click up here in the top uh, black track here and I'm gonna go over here to my boundaries and I'm just gonna make sure that this says 1080p, all right? Just so everything is uniform across the, um, the whole scene here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my main timeline and then I'm gonna click on my group and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna resize this group. So I'm gonna make this group about 36%. So with this selected, go over here to your properties, go to your scale, and then select and just type in 36%. All right, so now we have it a little more uniformed to the size of our laptop itself. So next step is to then, we're gonna make some keyframe animations and we're gonna adjust this to fit the laptop itself and then keyframe it as it moves across and rotates through its scene, right? All right, so let's go ahead and work on that next. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is let's go ahead and rename this group. So I'm gonna right click it, select rename, and we're gonna call it placeholder, and then we're gonna call it keyframe. All right, so this is our placeholder group that we're gonna go ahead and keyframe across to then track the motion of the laptop, all right? So the first thing next is to uh, select our placeholder keyframe and then select animate, right? And we're gonna choose the distortion uh, properties there, right? Now let's go to easing and let's change our easing to be linear. And then let's go ahead and get started with this keyframing. All right, so first step is let's go ahead and go to our image here. I'll zoom in here a little bit so you can see. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn on our distortion effect, right? So up here in the top left above this um, image is the distortion effect. I'll select that and you can see it activated the four corners of the distortion tool. So what I can do is I can then take this first corner and then drag it to the corner of my left um, laptop screen. And then if I hold space bar on the keyboard, I can then click and drag to move myself around the canvas without messing with the actual images or my assets, right? So now I can take this corner, I can pull it to this side right here, and I can press spacebar, maneuver down a little bit, and then drag this guy in right here, and then move the corner here, all right? So the idea is to get this lined up nicely to where you want it to start, right? And then from there, we can start keyframing uh, with the motion of the laptop to then track it across the screen as it goes, right? So if I come back out here, you'll see that I've got it built into my screen already using the distortion keyframe animations. And now if I select my second keyframe, you'll see that as it tracked across, the laptop moved, right? But the screen didn't track with it. So if I select that second keyframe that we just have in here, I can then go in and reassess and move my points again, right? So again, turn back on my distortion effect and then drag my first point back where it is there. Hold spacebar and move around and then work my um, image back. So it's tracking the laptop as it's moving across, right? So let's go here and here, right? And then get it to your liking, right? So it stays consistent with what you originally had and then you should be good to go. All right, so if I press F to go back to my full screen here, you can see that it's starting to track it nicely. And then you basically just track it all the way down the, um, the scene here until you get to the end so it's tracked all the movement of the laptop, right? So if you wanted to add another set of keyframes, just select that second keyframe there, go to add animation, and go back to your properties and then choose distortion, right? And then you, it added that second set of keyframes for you. So now if I select this third keyframe here, you'll see that it's starting to get a little off there. 
Um, and then it'll start to, as it, the laptop rotates, the more um, keyframing you need to do to work its way across. So if I was to select this one, I would then come over here, zoom in a little bit, right? And I would then activate my distortion tool and then I would just kind of realign things to look nicely again um, and just kind of find the subtleties where the movement's happening and then recorrect my, my image, right? To fit the screen, all right? So if I come back out, you can see that it's, it's playing nicely, right? So it goes, it's looking pretty good. And that's how you do it. So just work your way across the animation there and let's pick up at the end of that keyframing. All right, so now that you've got all your keyframes out, it should look nice and smooth and it'll be tracking along with your laptop animating across screen like so. All right, so now what I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and select this placeholder keyframe and then I'm gonna go ahead and right click it and I'm gonna select group. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rename this and let's call it our master placeholder. All right, the reason I did that is because I'm gonna go ahead and insert a track mat on that group itself, and it's just easier to work with, right? All right, so next up, I'm gonna go ahead and add my scene mask. So I'm gonna come up to my media, go back to my folder here, and I'm gonna add my scene mask to this uh, screen here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and drag this over here like so. All right, as you can see, it's masked. It's kind of like a cool little screen that's uh, kind of to enhance the laptop feel into itself, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to my placeholder now, and then I'm gonna go over to my properties. I'm gonna scroll down, select track mat, and then from my mask here, under my options, I'm gonna select there and I'm going to choose mask, right? All right, so now that I've got that set, I'm also gonna change this to alpha, right? So now when I press play, you'll see that it tracks across there and it kind of added that nice little screen mask to it, um, making it even more of a cool laptop feel into itself. All right, so now I wanna add a few more layers so we can complete this sequence here, right? So let's go back to my media and I'm gonna go ahead and search for our scene AOV, right? So I'm gonna do this here and it's kind of like a nice little laptop overlay to kind of enhance it even more, all right? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my opacity though, I'm gonna take this down to about 50, 51% or so, all right? And then I'm gonna go ahead and drag in our scene reference here, which is black. And then what I'm gonna do now is come back to my scene, my laptop that we just added a second ago right here. And I'm gonna come over here to our track mat and I'm gonna select the mask and I'm going to choose our black reference point there and then change that to alpha. All right, so you can see how it kind of is enhancing the laptop even more, giving it more of that realistic look. So, right, so when you play it, it gives it that cool little sheen. It's looking really cool so far. All right, so now that I've got this scene built out, I'm gonna go ahead and select everything in my timeline by selecting Command A and then right clicking and selecting Group and then right clicking again and selecting rename. Now let's call this device and screen one, all right? So the cool thing is for our next step, we need to kind of reduplicate this whole process for a second screen, but we don't have to recreate the whole group, right? So what I can do is select device and screen one, come over here to duplicate right in my timeline, and then all we have to do is swap out a few assets, all right? So let's go ahead and right click this guy, hit rename, and instead of screen one, we're gonna call this guy screen two. So there we go. So now we don't get confused. So now when I go inside a, a device in screen two, I can scroll down, go into my master placeholder, go inside of our placeholder keyframe and the images that were there for the wallpaper of that first computer, we're gonna delete these guys out. And then we're gonna go over here to our media and then we're gonna drag in our secondary screen, right? So it's looking pretty good so far. So if I go back to the main timeline and I just drag this to the side here so you can kind of see, so it's not overlaid on top right now. But now you can see that I've got this secondary background and the work is still there. We didn't have to do a lot of work. All the legwork was done in the beginning. Now we just duplicated that process and then replaced the, uh, the media inside there. All right, so let's go ahead and move device and screen two so it's layered on top of device and screen one. All right, so my next step now is to create a shape and let's go ahead and create a rounded rectangle. All right, so with our rounded rectangle selected, let's go ahead and expand that so it's the size of our canvas. Make that the same length as our device, of both of our device screens. And then let's go ahead and right click that, rename it, and let's call it mask. All right, now let's go ahead and create one more shape and let's create a square. And I'm gonna go ahead and while this is here, let's drag this out to the length of our mask below. And then let's go ahead and change the color of that square so that it's white. All right, and then we're gonna right click, rename the square, and we're gonna call this line. We're gonna resize this in a second, all right? So what I'm gonna do next is I need to then, I'm gonna go ahead and select my mask first, and we're gonna go ahead and drag it to the left of the screen, and we're gonna have it start right at the edge of the frame here, right? 
All right, and so now what I can do is I'm gonna go ahead and select device in screen two. And let's go over here to properties and scroll down and choose track mat. And then we're gonna select from our drop down, and we're gonna choose the blue mask, which that we just created, all right? So now when I select that, you'll see it's, it's masked. Um, it's got a track mat on it, which is really cool. All right, so now let's go to the line and let's resize this a little bit. First, let's go ahead and expand it out so it's the, the width of, or the length, I should say, of our canvas, right? And then I'm gonna go ahead and just size it down so it almost looks like a little line, right? We don't wanna close it out all the way, but just enough to see, which looks pretty good so far right there. All right, now what I can do is select my line and instead of moving it manually by hand, which can be a little tedious when it's that small, I can go to my properties and then just move my X to the edge of the canvas there, right? So kind of in line with our blue mask there. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is select my mask and I'm gonna add a motion or a position keyframe, right? Cause I'm gonna have it come across screen and it's gonna create our transition effect. All right, but the first thing I do is before is I need to go back to my track mat cause I forgot one step and I need to change or make sure that our type is set to alpha. Make sure it's not set on Luma, it's set to alpha. All right, it's kind of an important step. All right, so now I go back to my mask. I'm going to start it maybe about right here. Or so, and then I'm gonna choose add animation position and it's starting right there, so we don't have to worry about that. But where we want it to go is select our second keyframe, and I'm going to drag this across the canvas here, and you can already see it revealed, and you can now understand what you can now understand what it's going to do, right? All right, so we're going to have it stop right there, and then we're going to come to our second, uh, or the line, I should say, add another animation position as well, and we're going to have that stay where it's at, and then we're going to end it um, in a similar position as that. So go to your properties because it's easier to move the line and then navigate across the screen like so. All right. All right. So now that we got that set, uh, we can then double click on these and then change our easing to be linear. The same thing for our mask. Let's make the easing linear. And then again, just like for keyframes in general, the closer they are together, the faster the animation happens, the longer they are, the slower that animation is, right? So let's go ahead and drag this out a little bit further so our line doesn't just whip across screen there super fast. All right, so let's go ahead and give that a play and see what that looks like. All right, nicely done. So we have a cool animation effect inside of Create Studio Pro. So hopefully you got some really cool quick tips out of here. Can't wait to see what y'all create. I'll catch you on the next tutorial.